In the previous video, we implemented the prepend method to add new nodes at the beginning of the list. In this video, let's make sure that method works as expected by implementing the print method to visualize the nodes in the console. I'm going to begin by adding a new method in the linked list class. Print. The implementation of this method can be split into two steps based on whether the list is empty or not. Very similar to prepend. If the list is empty, so if this dot is empty, we simply log a message to the console that the list is empty. However, if the list is not empty, we have to traverse through the list from the first node till the last node while printing the value of each node. Here is how we are going to do that. We are going to begin by creating a temporary pointer called current or cur for short to traverse the list. Current will point at the head node since head is the first node in the list. We will then use the next pointer in each node to traverse the list. So current will be equal to current node dot next. This will give us access to the second node whose value can be printed. Similarly, current once again would be equal to current dot next once more, which will give us access to the third node. And this will continue for all elements in the list. But how do we know if we have covered all nodes in the list? Well, once all nodes have been covered, current will point to current.next which is null. If current pointer points at null, it implies we have covered all the nodes in the list. If this is clear, let's go back to replit and write the code. Within the else block, we begin by creating a new temporary pointer that points at head, which is the first node in the list. Let current is equal to this dot head. I will also create a variable to store the node values in the list. So let list values is equal to an empty string. Now what we have to do is advance the current pointer as long as it does not point at null. So while current pointer is truthy, we're going to store the node value in the list values variable. List values plus equals backticks dollar curly braces the current node dot value. And then we're going to leave a space at the end. We will then point current to the next node. So current is equal to current dot next. This will repeat till current points after the last node, which would be null and the loop exits. Finally, we log list values to the console. That is our print method. Let's now verify if the prepend and print methods work as expected. I'm going to call the print method three times. First, when the list is empty. Second, when the list has one item. And third, when the list has three items. If I now run the code, we see the logs from before. So list is empty is true, list size is zero. And we see the log statement from our print method list is empty. We prepend 10 and the same is printed. We prepend 20 and then 30 and we see the list now contains all three elements in the right order. First 30, then 20 and then 10 since we are inserting elements at the beginning. Both prepend and print are working as expected. 
Hopefully, the concept of linked list data structure is slowly starting to make sense. Give it a minute and call the methods we have implemented so far in a different order. Make sure to have a pen and paper and write the expected output and then compare with the output in the console. I cannot stress enough how important it is that you code along with me rather than just watching. All right, in the next video, let's see how to add a new node at the end of the linked list. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.